singing. So enjoy your singing. Enjoy your message. <clears throat> Book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 15. Book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 15. Romans 8, 15. Of all people, of all people, the children of God are a blessed people. We have so much to be thankful for. We have so much to be happy for. We have the promise that one day I'll stand before God. I'll be in heaven with my Savior. Uh, he sent his comforter to be with us. He's not left us com comfortless. You know, you watch all the things that go on through this life, all the tragedy, all the heartache. You know, and just this past week, the attempted bombings, uh, the evil that's in the heart of man. Uh, in the, the Jewish synagogue yesterday, 11 people shot and murdered. I heard uh, the oldest one was 97. I thought, how, what a shame to live 97 years only to be brought down by somebody's hate. Um, we, we, and, and we live in a world where there's just no hope. Seems to be no hope. But as a child of God, we have hope. We have hope. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 says, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself beareth, with, beareth witness of our spirit, with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. I want to spend just a few minutes this morning and preach on, Here's your, here is your inheritance. What are you leaving? What are you leaving? Father, I ask that you would speak to us this morning through your word. It's not me, God. I can't do it. Uh, there's no words I could say. But we are going to read your words, and we're going to try to unwrap them a bit. And God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts. God, I pray for the Christians that are here that, uh, Lord, uh, they, they know that they're saved. Uh, we know that we're on our way to heaven. But, God, there just seems to be a, an apathy, kind of a lethargic attitude about seeing your gospel uh, promoted and seeing that uh, being a witness and testimony i pray god that we might uh, get on fire even today i pray also for some that might be here that do not know you as savior your son jesus christ god may they understand that uh, you paid the penalty of the sin of all of mankind and all has to be done is just receive our need of you and accept you and, and we can too then uh, be in heaven with you one day. Bless now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul speaks of the position and possession of the child of God in these verses. Um, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, you can turn there if you like. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Yep. I'm trying to make sure I had the right water bottle. There's several up here. Of course, I could always grab my soda. Uh, okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10 says, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Who's that talking about? Who's that talking about? That's us. That's us. Let's read it again. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. My goodness. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Heavenly things are experiential. They cannot be fully realized until they are fully experienced. Now, I'm not there. I'm not in heaven. But I can't imagine what it's going to be like. I can't imagine what God has done for me. My, 
my father passed away here October 1st. And uh, gosh, I can't tell you. Like so many of you that have lost loved ones, probably 40, 50 times already, I thought, I'm going to call dad. Can't call dad. Can't call dad. Uh, and I miss him. Oh, I miss him. But you know, I know where he's at. Praise God, I'm going to go get to see him one day. And it probably will not be very long, one day soon. Time goes by so quickly. I called and wished a pastor friend a happy birthday for uh, this week. And uh, he said, it seems like I just had one of these about a month ago. I said, the older we get, the faster it goes. Uh, my father-in-law claims that his birthday comes around just every few months. Uh, he's 91 now, and he said, this comes around all the time. So very fast. But we, um, as my father's son, he left an inheritance. Nothing, nothing big or anything like that. But we went and sat down, my brothers and I. We went and sat down with the lawyer, and they said, this is what your dad has done. This is what your dad planned for you. My dad provided for us a little something. And there's an inheritance. I have an earthly inheritance. Of course, when I die, I'll leave it to somebody else. You know, it's kind of the old saying. They said, uh, so-and-so died. How much did he leave? Oh, he left it all. He left it all. But we have an inheritance as a child of God. And I praise God for that. Three things we see in this verse, in these verses. One is our position is in, in Christ. We have been given the spirit of adoption. The spirit here is capitalized because it's a direct uh, uh, reference to the Holy Spirit who lives within the child of God. He indwells us and he seals us until the day of redemption. The Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever have the Holy Spirit that lives within you. I'll tell you, when your heart is down and you're sad and maybe you're going through a dark valley, understand that within you resides the Comforter. The Comforter. Verse 17 says, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. We have something that those that are not saved cannot have, does not have. Because it is see, uh, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto, unto the praise of his glory. The earnest. You go down to buy a, a car, what do they usually ask you for? A little down payment. A little down payment. Or maybe you buy a house. What are they going to ask you for? They're going to ask you for uh, some money down. Why? They're looking for an earnest, that you're going to earnestly, you're going to buy it. You're going to intend to buy that. And that's what God has done for us. He in earnest, bought us through the cross of Calvary. Adoption means that we have been both chosen and accepted. Adoption refers to the act by which an adult formally becomes a guardian of a child and incurs the rights and responsibilities of a parent. And at the conclusion of the formal process, a legal relationship between the child and guardian will be formed. The legal relationship results in the adoptee becoming the legal heir of the adopter. And it terminates any legal rights then in existence with the natural parents. Just recently, uh, you know, if I say drug abuse, drug use, it touches every life in this room. It's amazing. It's amazing. You may not have been partaker of it or may not have had it involved in your own personal life, but you know somebody probably very close to you that it has had an effect in their life. 
that affected my brother, my younger brother. And it really, I firmly believe that's why he's in, uh, died so young and in heaven because he ignored the uh, symptoms of disease in his body uh, when he was on drugs. As a consequence of that, you know, when you're involved in something like that, uh, and I'm being very transparent this morning, I don't like to share my business, I don't know many of us do, but I think it's good to talk about it because I'm pretty well acclaimed with this, his daughter got involved in drugs. A month before my brother, a month after my brother passed away, uh, my niece gave birth to this little boy. But she was involved in drugs too. My father, my mother, took them in and tried to raise him. And after about two years of time, my niece was on the streets. And it began the process of my dad becoming the foster parent. And up until he was 90 years old, was raising that boy by himself. Took him to school every day. Took him to play sports. Did everything with him. Uh, spoiled him a little bit because he's grandpa, great grandpa. He did that. Oh. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking. But then my dad got sick. And the process was, and we all knew what was going to happen, my dad would not live forever. We are, we all indeed have an appointment with death. And so, within the family, we begin to look. Who's the best candidate? Who's the best candidate to take this young boy and raise him? And so as we went through all the families, it was decided that my oldest son and his wife would adopt him. And just this past week, just Friday, he legally became theirs. Praise God. And in my heart, I said, you did it, Dad. You did it. He gave his life to raise that boy, to bring him up right. It's amazing because if you talk to uh, my grand nephew, <laughs> whatever he's called now, uh, he sounds like a he sounds like an old orky. My dad was from Arkansas. He's got that Arkansas logic, and so you talk to him, it's like talking to a man. But he was adopted. He was wanted. There was nobody within our family that says we're just going to let him go into the system. No, no. He's staying with the family. We wanted him. We were not going to let him go. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. He said, I don't want to let you go. I want to adopt you. He did it on purpose. Can you imagine that? When somebody gets adopted, to me, that is really precious because, you know, when, when you get married and you, uh, you have babies and that thing comes well, you're stuck with what you get. But when you adopt a child, you're going, on purpose, I'm choosing you. On purpose, I want you. And that's what God did through his son, Jesus Christ. He has adopted us. He has adopted us. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the, begin, from the beginning chosen you. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Does that mean all are going to be there? No. Some have rejected the adoption. Hmm. Fruit to salvation through sanctification by the spirit of belief and belief of the truth. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 6 says, But to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. We belong to God and we are now hid in Christ. Praise God for that. Now we have peace in Christ. Abba Father. Abba Father has the meaning of Jewish Papa maybe sitting up here. And full beard, kind of like 
Rick there, full beard, and that child coming up and climbing up into his lap and grabbing him by his beard and saying, Papa, Papa. Our Heavenly Father has done that with us. And he would have us climb into his lap and say, Papa, teach me. Thank you, Papa, for adopting me. Our Lord Jesus Christ expressed his love in the Father. Mark chapter 14, verse 36, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt, is Jesus. The Holy Spirit expressed his love for the Father in Galatians chapter 4, and verse 6. Says, and because you are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The child of God expresses his or her love for God. Romans 8, 15, back in our text. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received, received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Do you realize that we were steeped in our sin, that we were in the bondage of sin, that we are, had been claimed by sin? And the end of sin is death. But God said through his son Jesus Christ and the shed blood on Calvary, I will adopt you. I will adopt you. 1 John 5 verses 1 and 2. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Praise God. You receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're born of God. And everyone that loveth him that beget loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. We should love one another. 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Let's see if I can remember how to explain this. But basically, your fate has been sealed. Your fate has been sealed. Uh, and you'll be in everlasting torment. And thirdly, I see our possession in Christ. In Hebrews chapter 9, verses 14 through 17, it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of inter internal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also necessity, uh, also of necessity be the death of the tester. For a testament is a force of after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. In other words, we had a testament that we were doomed without Christ. But praise God that he came in and paid that penalty for us. As children, we are heirs. The Holy Spirit gives light unto the word heirs. Every child has a potential inheritance, and I talked a little bit about that. Hmm. I have the earthly inheritance, and many people will have an earthly inheritance. But only the saved are able to be called heirs and joint heirs with God, with Jesus Christ. As God's children, we are heirs of God. The Holy Spirit gives us some more light on this. Um, since God made the universe and all that they're in, there is therein. He owns it so that we are his children and we have a portion of what he owns. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? As children in Christ, we are joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. I'm a joint heir here with my brothers. I'm a joint heir with my brother. But when it comes to my salvation, I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You know, we have a wonderful inheritance as children of God. We have a home in heaven. We have the blessings of God that he gives us. 
It's something that you cannot have if you're not saved. So what are you leaving? What are you leaving? What kind of legacy will you leave when you go? The inheritance I have from my father, there are some earthly, physical things, but he left so much more than that that is in me, that is in me. People that see me, I, I hear your father in you. I see your father in you. I, you act like your father to me, which is a high honor, a high honor. We understand the spiritual. We, 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 don't, we, we can't know what all is in heaven because we've not experienced it yet. One day we will, and we'll realize that inheritance. But there's so much more inheritance that God gives us that we don't share. He should put, knowing that you're saved, it should put a smile on your face. It should put a bounce in your step. You should be excited as you go out through your daily activities and go, there's somebody I can witness to. There's somebody I can witness to. There's somebody I can tell about the Lord. There's somebody that needs to get saved. There's a brother in Christ that needs encouragement. Are we so wrapped up in ourselves that we don't want to share this inheritance? God said, here's your inheritance. My question is, what are you leaving? What are you leaving? When I die, I want people to say, he loved the Lord. I really did. He loved the Lord. I think I have a long way to go. I'd love for people to say that. But in order for that to happen, I need to be about the Father's business. You know, I, I think a lot of people are, are sold on just being that kind of that silent Christian. I'll be there, God, when I know it's very evident that you need me to speak up and say something, you know. Um, I think sometimes when tragedy happens in the lives of people, uh, people are surprised to find out who is saved and who's been in church and, and might have something to say because they've never demonstrated that in their life. This, this song we sang a while ago, it says, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord, or mountain or plain or sea. How about across the street? How about to your neighbor? Do they know you're saved? I th we need to get to basics, back to the basics and doing the main thing. You know, Rick, I thank you very much. appreciate the door knocking and soul winning and handing out on Saturdays. They're doing, they're doing it on the evenings. I praise God for that. But folks, we on a daily basis need to be doing that. We need to be recognized that God's done a work in my heart and life. And I need to share this with people. We want to see people walk the aisle and get saved. We want to see people get baptized. But it doesn't happen if we don't share our inheritance. Are you sharing that this morning? I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord, or mountain, or plain, or sea. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. I started to say, I think that a lot of us are, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll step up in that, in that one special moment. And I, I think it's, we're afraid of being called a fanatic. He's always talking about the Lord. He's the little Jesus. Somebody, we were talking about that the other day of somebody, I can't remember who it was. And I thought, and, and I, you ever been called little Jesus? I was called little Jesus in high school. And uh, I thought about it and I thought, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. You know, for people to recognize that there's something different about you, something going on, it's not a bad thing. But I think a lot of us don't want to be recognized, it would seem, as a fanatic. You know, he's just really religious. You know, the world will say, just really, he's a religious nut. We ought to be. We ought to be a nut for Christ. We ought to be a fanatic for Christ. If you really comprehend and understand what he has done for you, we really ought to be about being a witness and testimony. And as a body of believers, we can see God do some wonderful things here. What are we doing? What are we doing? Four separate times on Friday, within my job, busy like you guys, I had opportunity to talk to people about the Lord. 
One I knew. The other three are different. You just start talking. You just start talking. It's not like you're getting up on a soapbox and preaching. And you're just simply sharing with them God's word. And you allow God's word to do the work. Amen? What are we doing? What are we doing? God has given us such a wonderful inheritance. But the change that he's done in my life, the things that he's provided for me, ought to cause me to want to do something for him. What can I do for him? I can tell others that he loves them. Those that have no hope. Let's pray. Here's your inheritance. Here's your inheritance. So what are you leaving? What are you leaving? What's your